So, good evening everyone. Is Twitter gendered? And what does that mean? First of all, should I apologize? When uh, the program of um, this evening was communicated on Twitter, there was some, and I'm going to use um, less unfriendly wording <laughs> than in the previous version, there were some people who said that there was a mistake made by inviting middle speakers. Um, you could look upon this as an example of uh, how um, society tries to gender about everything there is. And um, I'm using the terms gender so, and gendering, so uh, the first thing I have to do is explain what I mean by this. We are getting born in a, f a shape, in a body, and that body has male characteristics or female characteristics. When we transpose these characteristics into sociological and psychological um, traits, this is the effect of gender which is working. The process of doing so, the process of trying to catch what it means to be born in such um, or such body, um, the process of um, narrowing down what it means to be a particular uh, woman, a particular man, into very specific stereotypes, this process um, is called gendering. And uh, I would like to raise some questions on how um, gender and gendering uh, is affecting the way we are using social media. And I could have used Facebook as an example, or I could have used other uh, social media platforms as an example. Now I've got a specific reason why uh, I'm using Twitter, because um, Twitter is one of these few um, leftovers from the old days on the internet where it didn't really matter. I don't know if you remember the um, cartoon that was published in um, 93, uh, where two dogs are talking to each other, saying that on the internet nobody knows you're a dog. Gender is also um, identity. It's part of our identity and the way we communicate about it, the way we communicate our identity. There used to be a time on the internet when you didn't have, had to, um, you didn't have to communicate that identity. You could play with identity. You could take whatever role you wanted. If you wanted to um, bend the gender, uh, you could do so. If you wanted to experiment with different kinds of identities at the same time, you could do so. Now there is this evolution in how identity relates to the internet. Uh, this evolution is um, driven forward um, also by some um, forces of power who would uh, like to see everyone on the internet identified. Identified with the official identity we have. One of the reasons they give is because uh, a lot of online behavior um, is being defined more and more as being problematic. And in order to get rid of those um, issues, we have to be able to identify um, those who do the nasty deeds. Well, I don't think that there, this is a true reason uh, or um, a sensible reason to force people into narrow identities. Okay, about Twitter. Well, Twitter doesn't exist because Twitter is a lot of things. Twitter is a business to start with. And if you go and try to find out who owns the business, who runs the business, uh, the challenge is try, and find, uh, try to find the women. Uh, you will get disappointed because there aren't. The business is uh, being r um, run by men in this case. Well, maybe this doesn't um, reflect on what's, what is happening on Twitter, because Twitter, um, besides being a business, Twitter is also, and in the first place, it's a platform for social networks. So what Twitter is depends on how you use it. The question is, is can we observe differences in the way it's being used, based, differences based on gender? And what is the impact that gender plays in what is happening on Twitter. And some questions to uh, ask yourself is, what are you doing on Twitter? What are you tweeting about? When are you tweeting? Are you tweeting the whole evening? 
Where are you tweeting? Are you tweeting while you're sitting um, in some very nice room listening to someone? Um, who are you interacting with? I've got slightly under 2,000 followers on Twitter. I have no clue who these people are. I don't connect with these people. I'm connected on Twitter with few people. With um, something that you could translate to the offline world. In the offline reality, you aren't connected with 2,000, with 3,000, 5,000, 10,000 people. That's not real. So, how do you interact with those people on Twitter? Are there differences? And are those differences based on gender? Are those dif differences based on the fact that you're interacting with a man or interacting with a woman? Twitter is also a device mediated communication in a very specific context, the context that uh, is being defined by the uh, format restrictions Twitter is forcing upon us. You have to be very creative to do something <coughs> useful in 140 characters. Does that influence the way we communicate? And is that influence stronger than the influence that is coming from um, who we are as a biological <coughs> being? Does the physical absence of the receiver of your communication influence the communication that you are um, creating on Twitter. Okay, now, what do you do on Twitter? How do you tweet? Do you inform? Do you share? Do you express emotions? Do you use emoticons? I'm asking these questions because some researcher, researchers are claiming that there is a gender difference in the way we are using emoticons. Well, I don't know. Uh, I read these researches. I have a lot of questions on the methodology that they are using. Um, and I do some uh, own research myself that doesn't confirm the uh, results of other researches. This is very typical for the immature state of uh, social media in general and Twitter in particular. One of the approaches that I prefer to use is um, to take it as for granted that Twitter and Facebook and all the other social media platforms that we are using are gendered by definition, simply because they make a uh, part of real life. There is a lot of thinking where, there is made, um, where people make a distinction between real life, they refer to real life meaning the offline life or offline part of our life, I tend to disagree with this distinction. There is no real distinction between offline and online life. When you go online, you are still in your real life. It's simply another kind of activity that you are performing. So, I have no idea, I have no answer to the question um, to what degree Twitter um, is being gendered, but my assumption is that since the whole of our life is being gendered, because doing so, living this gendered life means making political choices ourselves or being forced upon these political choices made by others. Since Twitter is part of this real life and real life is gendered, Twitter is gendered as well. And we shouldn't be surprised by it. What we should try to do is to um, find more relevant questions on what the meaning uh, of gender on Twitter could be, instead of going for the simple answers, trying to understand that the simple answers um, that are given today are part of a broader story that um, tend to um, create issues on Twitter. By defining these issues or um, uh, illuminating these issues on Twitter, other purposes than simply doing stuff on Twitter are being served. And it's interesting to make the distinction between um, the political reasons for um, going after the gender issue on Twitter and the real gender issues on Twitter themselves. I think that I can conclude my story here. Uh, I hope that I raised at least one or two interesting questions. And if you have questions, please raise them. Thank you. Okay.